Welcome back. It's still the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. We have a very interesting conversation ahead, of course, must um, really introduce in a tease this morning. The Nigerian Medical Association has urged the federal government uh, of Nigeria to ensure the payment of a newly approved hazard allowance to its members within the next two months. This is contained in a communique issued at the end of uh, the association's August National Executive Council meeting on Sunday in Gombe. Uh, the communique, which was made available to the news agency of Nigeria, of course, copy of which we have in Abuja, was signed by the NMA president, Dr. Uche Ojima, and the Secretary General, uh, Dr. Jide Onye Kwelu. Uh, the association further resolved to continue the engagement using every lawful means to ensure the payment of the said allowance. The group said that it observed the slow progress made towards the implementation of the new hazard allowance and the attempt to exclude doctors in ministries, departments and agencies and those in basic medical faculties and universities. It also said it had observed that some state governments have always shied away from complying with an upward review of salaries and allowances to doctors in state service. We're glad to say joining us to discuss this all important issue of staff welfare in the health sector. Professor Ken Ozilo, who is the immediate uh, past president of the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria. And um, we also have the immediate or the former president of the National Association of Resident Doctors with us. We'll try and get uh, the full details. His name uh, later. Um, sorry about that mix up. Uh, gentlemen, we would like to say a good morning and welcome to you. Um, I'll start with Prof. Prof, please, um, for those who do not know, um, for just so we can just start with the enlightenment, what is a hazard allowance? Number two, what was the former, uh, the previous hazard allowance and what is the new hazard allowance? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning once more. Um, the thing to understand is that, you know, the salary structure um, in the health sector generally, you know, is um, divided into your basic salary and other allowances, okay? The hazard allowance is one of those allowances that is meant to compensate for the risks and dangers uh, faced by uh, medical personnel in this case, in the course of the discharge of their duties, you we, uh, you agree with me that you know in the course of um, treating patients, uh, medical person medical personnel do get exposed so, to certain risks such as infectious diseases. Um, I mean, we all know the case of uh, Ebola and um, the heroic doctor Adedevo who paid the supreme price to try to help the country contain this danger. So it is in that um, context, it's, it's, it's one of those allowances that was meant to um, offset that. Now, I haven't said that uh, in the past, but before, before the outbreak of um, the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the hazard allowance had been a flat 60,000 Naira per year, which translates to about 5,000 Naira per month for every worker. Now, in the wake of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in 2020, um, it became obvious that the issue of the risks, you know, exposed, that health workers are exposed to is indeed great. And it was in recognition of this that government took the step to um, increase the hazard allowance. Now, a, for two or three months or so, um, government paid 50% uh, of the basic salary as hazard to all the health workers. And this was meant to um, encourage the workers, as it were, in their response to the pandemic. Now, it was after this that um, government went into negotiation with the associations and unions in the health sector with a view to increasing the hazard because it became very patent and clear to all 
that a flat rate of 5,000 was simply not anywhere near adequate in um, compensating for the dangers the workers are exposed to. Now, the negotiations on the new hazard allowance uh, lasted a very long time, but I think that um, sometime in December last year, um, you know, a new rate was approved. Uh, let me hasten to add that I was privileged to be part of the, the negotiations at some point as um, then president of the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria. And in conjunction with the NMA, the NARD, um, other unions in the health sector, it was extremely difficult to arrive at a new um, proposal in terms of new rates, okay? And to the best of my knowledge, the, the demands of the NARD or of the NMA, let me say, um, were not met and neither that of the other unions. But sometime in December last year, a uh, government came out with new rates. It is interesting to note that, you know, the NARD had actually opposed or kicked against the new rates because it was um, something that still fell far short of what was demanded by the uh, NMA and other health workers. Um, but, you know, government uh, went ahead anyway and brought this out. It is therefore a little bit ironic that um, at this point in time, eight months down the line or thereabouts, we're still in a position where even that which was um, unilaterally awarded by government uh, has not been kept to by the same government. Okay, uh, uh, so let's also um, ask uh, Dr. Kane right there. Are you with us? Unfortunately, we, we probably have lost connection. Well, but my concern would be, I mean, just the issue that you have raised, uh, the fact that on the one hand, government had agreed to or had said we're going to increase the hazard allowance. And then on the other hand, uh, they're also saying that uh, we will not, we're going to face out, you know, payment of hazard allowance to doctors and what have you, I mean, what could really be, you know, the issue now, this irony? You say one thing, you say another thing. What exactly do you think might be the issue? Well, um, I, I've observed in the past, you know, from the benefit of my exposure to the workings of government and its agencies, that there is a certain level of disconnect, you know, between the agents of government such that you know, oftentimes you have one arm speaking in one voice and a different arm speaking in a different voice. Uh, I do not think that this is good for any system, and I do not think that it builds um, confidence within the system. However, uh, what I will say is that I am aware that there is a circular effect that government has approved a new hazard allowance, which I just spoke about. I think that is commendable you know, on the one hand, but I also think that government should um, follow up, you know, by implementing that which it has approved. Uh, I, I'm aware also that there are some, it's been muted in some government quarters again, uh, of a plan to scrap the hazard allowance and all that. I have, to the best of my knowledge, I have not seen any circular to that effect. Uh, so what I think is existing or what is extant is the circular that we have, and I would rather prefer to approach it from that angle. All right, we, we will have to um, prof profusely apologize to um, uh, Dr. Nyebuese John Guchuku, uh, who is a former president of the National Association of Resident Doctors. Um, we earlier uh, didn't uh, put out his name. That wasn't a profession of us. We sincerely apologize. Um, so, uh, 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 Dr. Gochukwu, are you there with us, please? Do we still have you, sir? Good morning, um, and good morning to viewers. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and I would be present, please, Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors. Okay, no more National Association of Resident Doctors. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank sir. you very much for, for, for that update. Um, 
what what would you say to Professor um, position or his information to us that um, the NARD opposed this new uh, hazard allowance? Uh, exactly, uh, Prof has laid the background to the negotiation that led to the uh, increment in the hazard allowance. Previously, as he said, it was 60,000 naira per annum, which became a flat rate of 5,000 naira. Over time, that agreement was in 29, 2009, and then that agreement was also meant to be renegotiated after a period of time, uh, probably about uh, three or four years. Uh, government has consistently shied away from that renegotiation. But just as Prof said, with the advent of the pandemic of COVID-19, it became obvious that uh, that 5,000 Naira is no more tenable. Then um, all the health workers, including Enu Arudi, under the auspices of our uh, mother association, Nigeria Medical Association, went into that negotiation. Our position remained that that hazard allowance should be increased by 50% of our basic salary. However, you know, negotiation is a give and take. Governments uh, had their own position. We have our own position. And when they came out with their own position, it fell far short below our own um, negotiation, our own uh, point of request. And we actually, as Prof said, opposed it. However, subsequently, uh, NMA said, yes, NMA already, we know you opposing it, but we can get this as a starting point and continue the negotiation. And on that basis, uh, we agreed, let government not be, eh? let government not use the excuse that NMA already opposed it and uh, hide under that excuse and would not be able to implement what has been agreed with them. And for the past one year, uh, we've been able to say, okay, pay the, uh, the rate you've agreed while the negotiation continues, which government has failed to pay. I would quickly want to add that um, we have a government that has been insensitive to the plight of workers in Nigeria, not just doctors, as we still has been on strike for some months now. So the working force is a completely and overtly neglected by government to... Uh, with preference to the political class, all in the name of political correctness. Has that allowance beyond the issue of uh, being exposed to some um, unwarranted uh, infectious diseases while working in the hospital? It also covers you for the period that you are not on duty and they just call you by 1 a.m. that there is a patient on, in emergency that you need to attend to. And you have to burn your fuel, leave your family within the wee hours of the night to go to the hospital to attend to this patient. You are exposing yourself to hazard. You are exposing yourself to insecurity. So imagine a, a five thousand naira compared to the over five million naira they will be requiring of you if you happen to be kidnapped. We are saying this has been unfair. Increase this hazard allowance and give an incentive. It's an encouragement. It's an incentive. Allowances are incentive to boost workers morale to remain in the country and keep working is one of the the factors that would overtly um prevent the brain drain that we are currently facing but if government is playing with it that is why we are having more doctors travel outside this country on daily basis three doctors are leaving nigeria on daily basis three doctors are leaving nigeria or more than that all right so we feel at this point in time government should implement this agreement and if they are saying, on one hand, um, they are uh, having an agreement with uh, uh, health workers. And then on the other hand, they are saying that they want to scrap it. I think it's political correctness. That would not work. Because um, from our own point of view, neither NARD nor NUMA is going to accept such such a political correct statement from government. If they say they are not going to pay hazard, then that means also they themselves should not also be receiving some allowances that they are entitled to. I think it's high time we begin to question some of the allowances uh, at, the, at the government corners. These are the few things I want to add to what Prof has already said. All right, um, uh, let's get back to Professor Ken. Uh, Professor Ken, are you still with us? Yes, I can hear you clearly. All right, so I'd like to share your thoughts on this. I mean, we're moving deeper because it's still within, you know, the medical uh, practitioner or, you know, the sector as it is. Uh, what would you say are your thoughts on the alternative bill, uh, that's the alternative medicine bill that's been proposed by the government? We know that the uh, Nigerian Medical Association has actually frowned at it very, you know, um, 
profusely. But, but I'd like to share your thoughts on that. Well, um, I think that world over, different um, societies and different civilizations have developed their own indigenous, local um, medical practice, which some of which have been, you know, tested over the years and um, uh, some found to some level to be efficacious. But, but more, to, more to the point, I think, um, is the issue of acceptance by the people. Um, I, if that be the case, I think um, those things, some of them have been codified and regulated and um, to varying degrees incorporated into the contemporary medical practice. Uh, examples abound from places like, especially China, India, and um, yeah, places like that. The story has not so far been as successful in Nigeria, largely because of the difficulty or inability to standardize and codify the practice of alternate, alternative medicine in Nigeria. Um, in, 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 there is no doubt that orthodox medicine has its limitations, and there is no doubt that it can be complemented. I'll give you an example. In China, for instance, um, acupuncture is an established practice, not just in China, you know, even in some Western society, okay, is, is an established um, uh, practice, okay, but like I said, the practice is codified and standardized. Our experience in Nigeria has been that um, there, there, there's minimal uh, standardization with the effect that, you know, people um, come up and make claims uh, as to what they can achieve and what cannot be achieved. There are no clear-cut boundaries of where the orthodox ends and where the alternative starts. And I think that in as much as it is uh, good to have that sense that this is our practice, this is what is indigenous to us, this is what is ours. We should also not, in the name of that, endanger uh, our people to risks. Because from the point of view of orthodox practice, I will tell you that um, I've experienced, I have a, a large amount of experience of complications resulting from badly managed cases, um, which usually start from, you know, this poorly standardized and poorly regulated alternative practice, invariably ending up in a very bad situation in the uh, conventional orthodox practice. So uh, I would like to look at it in that light. I will not totally throw it away, but I think there is a great need for standardization and qualification, and that should proceed it incorporation but just a quick one now just quickly I, I really don't know if you've actually seen the component of that bill but for the argument that the NMA has actually raised is that uh, part of the component would be in conflict with the statutory functions of the Medical Dental Council of Nigeria and uh, you are an immediate past president of you know that association so I'm asking do you really think that this is a good idea Okay, first of all, a quick correction. There's a difference between the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria that regulates medical practice and the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria, of which I was past president. Uh, so I think, to the best of my knowledge, the Medical and Dental Council has the overall responsibility of regulating all medical practice in Nigeria. And so if any new bill is coming up to... Um, uh, that is in conflict with some of the um, powers and responsibilities it already has, I think that would be an issue. But I think this is something that can be further um, enlightened, I mean, clarified by the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. Okay, uh, Doc, doc uh, uh, before we go, uh, finally, regarding the issue of um, uh, new hazard allowance, um, 
uh, the 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 NARD had given had given an ultimatum uh, to the uh, to the federal government um, some time ago uh, regarding this particular issue. Do you foresee um, the NARD, um, you know, carrying out this threat to go on a strike, you know, uh, following this uh, two-week ultimatum? Uh, do you foresee the NRD going on a strike? Uh, of course, we know that this will cripple the health sector in the country, looking at the, uh, the role the uh, resident doctors play. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, but permit me to uh, briefly speak a little on the uh, traditional alternative medicine and complementary bill uh, still going on, the position of uh, NUME. Uh, first of all, uh, just like Prof has stated, I would want to say that the Medical and Dental Practitioners Act had empowered um, Medical and Dental Council to regulate uh, the practice of medicine as well as alternative and complementary medicine. I would also want to add quickly that uh, if you look at medicine, we have the traditional medicine, we have alternative and complementary medicine, then we have the orthodox medicine, which we call the modern medicine. Now, every, as every medicine practiced all over the world is traditional in origin. Now, while the orthodox medicine has been modernized, standardized with international uniformity, that is what makes it globally accepted practice, the traditional medicine is still local. We practice within a locality without any standard. The standards are varied. Now, alternative and complementary medicine falls in between. It's been standardized within a nationality, within a nation. And that is why it has gone beyond traditional medicine and has gone into what should be regulated by the nation's own medical council, regulatory council. Because it is still pass is, is, is at partial international accepted level. It has a standard. But that standard is still practiced within a nation. Now, the matter and the cross of the matter where NMA comes in is that we have a medical and dental council empowered by medical and dental practitioners are to regulate our, our alternative medicine. Why are you creating another bill we, without carrying the medical profession along in developing, uh, in developing this bill? Unfortunately enough, this bill came from the Federal Ministry of Health. At the initial stage of proposing and, uh, the, this bill, discussion on this bill, they excluded the commissioners of health, they excluded the NMA, and when this bill came for public hearing, they excluded the NMA also. In fact, we heard about this bill on the day that the public hearing was taking place. So imagine what is happening in this country. You smuggle a bill into the Senate, you do a public hearing without involving all stakeholders, and you don't want to uh, enforce the bill in the country. So what we are saying is that it is, it is going to, if this bill becomes passed, it's going to encourage quackery, it's going to defeat all standardization of medical practice in the country. It's going uh, to... All right, um, Dr. Ochiko Oyeboze, apologies, because of time, uh, we will have to pull the plugs on the conversation uh, all at, right. at this uh, point. Okay. But we, we uh, want to thank... And summary, this is just to um, add on to what Prof has already said. Fantastic, this, right, fantastic. Uh, pr presently, um, a discussion is still ongoing with the government and then and we may lead in that discussion and we believe we want to believe we want to agree that um government is going to respond and make this payment within this time that we have given them but if they don't do that payment uh, to be honest with you i cannot guarantee the decision the neck of the nrd will take and whatever decision the neck of ARD will take, that decision will be to protect the welfare of the doctors and then to protect the health system in general. And that decision may be to proceed on the strike. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Onyebuweze Onyebuweze Ogochiko John. Onyebuweze. Yes. Onyebuweze John Ogochiko is uh, past president of the Nigerian Association of uh, Resident Doctors, as they're now known. And Professor Ken Ozilo is immediate past president of the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria. Uh, we thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we have a discussion up next. Of course, um, uh, a second major conversation on the program tonight, looking at the issues in the African <laughs> Democratic Congress. And, of course, um, we'll have some guests, two guests, uh, standing by for that conversation. Please stay with us.